What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a game called Survival Fountain of Youth. This is a demo for the game that's going to be coming out later on, and we don't see hardcore survival games very much anymore, so I am very, very willing to give something like this a shot, because, like, it feels like there was, like, a two-year period where every other game was, like, a knockoff survival game, and, like, they were really, really rough, but you got some in the middle that were actually pretty cool, like The Long Dark and Green Hell, and then after a while, people just stopped making crafting survival games. Survival Fountain of Youth is a callback to kind of that circa 2015 era, where you are a survivor who's stranded on an island and you've got to survive for as long as possible. And I think there's going to be like a narrative involved and everything else. The game takes place in the 1600s, so there's not going to be guns or anything else like that. As far as I can tell, your character is like a conquistador or something like that who's just been marooned on an island. And you've just got to make it work by crafting your way out of it. We're going to play for about 25-30 minutes today and see if it's something we wanted to add to our wish list or otherwise pass on. I've played only a very, very little bit. I'm going to do my best to give you my thoughts along the way about how I feel about the demo and like the various aspects of it. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down below in the description as well. But let's dive on in, because this game does have kind of like a, a lengthy intro going on to it. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look here. Uh, I don't think... We'll leave the intro on. The tutorial is fine, I guess, just so you guys know exactly what I'm doing. And honestly, having the tutorial on will allow me to sort of talk about the systems as they come up without forgetting anything. So that's good. We'll leave that on. We should be able to mash through it pretty quick. This story is inspired by real events. According to historic records, on March 4th, 1513, three ships sailed from Puerto Rico. They were heading to faraway islands and were led by the famous explorer Juan Ponce de Leon. The goal of the expedition was to search for the legendary Fountain of Youth. It all began in Puerto Rico, when Governor Juan Ponce de Leon gave military support to Indian Chief Gaibana in the war against other tribes. Spanish soldiers quickly ended the war and restored peace. The grateful chief told Ponce de Leon an ancient legend of his people. A legend about Bimini, a hidden island lost in the sea. According to the legend, in the center of Bimini lies the Fountain of Youth. Anyone who drinks from it will get health and youth for many years ahead. Chief also gave him an ancient map, covered with Indian inscriptions. The map showed an undiscovered group of islands. The location to search was clear but inscriptions were still a mystery to uncover. The captain took faith in the Indian legend and began to prepare an expedition. The best scientists and sailors have volunteered to join this venture. Three ships, Santiago, Santa Maria, and San Cristobal, sailed off. Ponce de Leon was sure that the ancient map will lead them to the fountain and bring them fame, wealth, and eternal youth. The trip to the islands took almost a month. On the 30th day of the journey, the lookout spotted islands up ahead. The very islands from the map. The expedition was one day away from its goal. I'm up! I'm up! I'm up! Oh, there's another guy right here. Can I punch him? Wake up! <laughs> Wake up! 
Uh, grab a brush, put on a little makeup. All right. Uh, what does this say? Last will and testament in case I die at the hand of the savages or from old age or for any other reason before the miraculous fountain of youth is found. I sign over to the Holy Church my property, namely a pair of boots, two shirts, a pair of pants, all undergarments, the salary owed to me if the expedition is successful. Please consider Ponce de Leon to be the executor of my will. Is that, like, my last will and testament? Like, who? I guess that must have been my... It's in my room, right? It's in my area. Oh, look at that sweet belt that we're leaving behind, bro. We're leaving behind that, like, ice-cold Gucci fit, man. We should definitely bring that with us. You never know when a belt's going to be useful. Everybody else appears to be out cold right now. Yep, everybody else is out cold. Big old ship in front of us. The Age of Sail. In 1607, we sailed the open sea. I'm sorry I sang your song. Please do not sue me, Disney. I had to add an extra syllable in there to make it work, but I feel like it's still valid. Um, definitely don't sue me, though, Disney. I don't have any money. Like, you can't... If you sue me, you're suing the wrong guy, all right? I have no money. It's not going to work out. An Indian artifacts note. On the islands we explored, we found numerous traces of culture, all special practical interests or strange ornate flasks with unusual water inside. We found two absolutely identical bottles on two different islands, both filled with water. Out of curiosity, I drank water from a bottle. It was surprisingly fresh and delicious. Within two days, my scars healed, and I started feeling years younger, stronger, and healthier. I cannot stop thinking about this water. Perhaps the flasks are somehow connected to the fountain of youth. What if this is the living water that Gaibana told me about? Just in case, I will leave a bottle in my chest. Hold up. Where's the where's the chest at? Hold on. I'm trying to get some eternal youth out here, bro. Oh, nice, dude. There's like some flint over here. Yeah, I'll take that. Got like a flint and a striker. Okay, okay. Light the oil lamp. I got you. The lamp has been lit. Oh, look at all these guns over here, dude. We got like mad gats. Okay. We definitely got to bring a gat with us. Just so we, ba bow you know, take out the threats. Expedition logbook. That's a lot of reading, and we're trying to get to gameplay. It'll be fine. Everyth everything's okay. I read through it on my practice playthrough, and it was just a log of the islands they had been to. And how they were not the, the fountain of youth. The fountain of youth. How come when video game ca- Oh, knocked out. How come when video games fall, like, video game characters fall over in first-person perspective, they always lay there on the floor with their hands flailing around like a turtle that's been put on its back? You ever notice that? But in all honesty, like, the animations, like, the game has very, very simple 3D renderings, but everything looks fine, and it runs pretty smoothly so far. Like, and the, the animations seem to be okay for the hands and whatnot. They don't seem too bad. Like, the punch feels okay. It's not, like, amazing, but it's all right. Uh, we've got the Grotto Location Map. We will find the Grotto. All right. Get items from the chest. So this is the thing. At the beginning of the game, you need to pick two items to bring with you to the island. You have a choice. You have a bag of food. You have a navy coat. You have a backpack. You have living water. You have iron flint. You have iron axe. You have an iron knife, you have a pistol with ammo, and you have an iron spear. You can only pick two of these things. You're out of luck for everything else. For me personally, I've played the game enough to know that I can make my own knife. So I'm going to take a backpack. And I think I can make my own fire. So we don't really need that. We can always make like a bow drill or something. An axe is not a terrible idea. But we can't make clothing, so I'm going to make a navy coat a part of my adventuring gear. Realistically, I feel like the powder and shot would be no good after diving into the water anyways. You know, you know how the old song goes, Jenny fill and you know, Jenny drew up me charges and filled them up to water and called to Captain Farrell to be ready for the slaughter. There's a reason why Jenny filled them up with water. Strong winds and giant waves appeared in a split second and slammed the ship. 
The sails broke apart and the ship slammed into the reefs. It's never a good thing when butter beans flying through the air eight feet off the ground. And tried to save the ship, but it was too late. I suspect conspiracy personally. I woke up on a sandy shore. I could not remember how I ended up on this beach, but I was alive and full of hope that my friends were somewhere nearby. Up we go. I feel like we just did this wake up routine just a minute ago. The load times are fairly considerable. I did test it before doing this video. Second loads go faster, but they are still chunky load times. I'm not on a solid state drive because I prefer to live in the past where everything is bright and rosy uh, through the glasses that I wield. But you know, uh, we need to find a green coconut. There's a green coconut right there, and it wants me to make some coconut water. Uh, crafting in this game is not done so like in other games you would drop the coconut on the ground and you would smack it with something and then you would like peel it. In this game they use a time based system for like all crafting. I don't know if I'm like a huge fan of it. It feels kind of non immersive but at the same time it does, I mean it does have a clean interface like it works fine uh, but there's our, there's, our, there's our coconut right there and so as you can see it takes us 20 minutes to harvest a coconut and so we've got coconut water now. So we can go back to our inventory and we can eat the coconut water. And as you can see, that's brought our thirst meter up to 88 out of 100. Now we got to find some food. Uh, we can find food in various ways. Uh, so like a green coconut, that's not food. you got to find a ripe coconut, which is one of the brown ones that's around here somewhere. Along the way, hopefully I can find a rock and some other tools and things too that I can play around with. The other option that we have in front of us is that there's conch shells over here. And we can actually pull the little critter out of it and eat it with our fingers, but... You know, that's kind of icky, and so I don't know if that's going to be... Oh, I got attacked by a crab, dude. There's one right there. And a little crab's run. Those dudes got some land speed, bro. Those are some speedy crabs right there. Oh, it's a turtle. I was like, what is that over there? Una tortuga. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave the turtle alone for right now because my family's Hawaiian, and it's like bad luck to do anything to a turtle. So, like, sea turtles... Sea turtle's kind of a big deal. So I'm going to leave him alone. But if I get really, really hungry, I'll think about that decision. Now, there's a rock laying right here on the ground, so I'll definitely take that. There's a stick right here. I'll pick up some leaves and things. Hey, there's a ripe coconut. There we go. Now, i got to bust this bad boy open. Yep, bust it open. There we go. So now we can eat the coconut flesh. There it is. Now, we got to get ourselves up to 50 on our hunger meter. I don't really want to eat the mussels. That seems like, I don't know, dude. Like, it feels like eating raw seafood is just, I, I can't say that it's going to be a bad idea, but to me it feels like a bad idea. Okay, so it wants me to gather narrow leaves. All right, well, the first thing I want to do is I want to craft a knife out of that rock that I found. We can actually nap this into a stone knife, which is why I didn't bring the knife uh, that was laying around, you know, inside the cabin. So there's our knife. Uh, we can stab with it. You know, we can be like, ah, stand and deliver. And then, you know, force the trees to hand over their gold. Unfortunately, trees are... If trees are known for one thing, it's their enduring poverty. So anyways, not a whole lot of gold to go around. Uh, we'll just pick up a bunch of this stuff right here. The game's crafting system, basically, as you pick stuff up, it just unlocks things. That's it. Things unlock. There's not really any more trees that direction. 
So I'm going to hit the trees that are back this way, I think. And there's another leaf right there. That works. I don't know if I want the coconut. I'm going to leave them on the tree for right now in case I need them later. We'll pull a couple of these bad boys off. It looks like it's going to take 20 minutes. Fair enough. I'm going to strip a few more trees, though. Ooh, another stick. Nice. What about you? You got anything for me? There we go. All right. So we got some branches and things laying around. I think this crate over here was lootable when I was playing around with the game, like prior to recording the video, just to make sure like my quality control was going. Yeah, and it's got a loaf of bread inside of it. That'll be helpful. Definitely take that. I don't know how many more crates and things are going to be around. I think I checked most of the ones on the shore when I was testing out the demo to make sure that like the quality control was good. And it looked like everything was okay. Uh, the game does run fairly smoothly. That's probably part of the result of the game. The game is not, like, particularly pretty, but they do have, like, lighting effects in there. And they do have some soft, like, volumetric things happening uh, that definitely help soften it up and make it look a little bit less sharp. I do have the game on maximum right now. I don't really know how that's going to process once it goes through, like, the encoding on YouTube. Like, this stuff, like, the grass on the ground always ends up looking like crap on YouTube. There's just nothing you can really do about it. Now, there are some sticks over here. I'm going to harvest these bushes real fast. There we go. Bushes. Let me get... Ow! I impaled myself on a stick! Man, I am not good at survival. Dear Diary, I have been on the hostile island for all of eight minutes, and I have impaled my duodenum on a stick. There we go. What did it call these right here? These are called ocotillos. Okay. Well, Okotios, you're about to just be a bunch of sticks that I'm going to craft stuff out of. So, like, I'm sorry this had to happen to you, but I landed on this beach and I plan to make this place hospitable. All right, so the first thing it wants me to do is it wants me to make a bed of leaves. So for a bed of leaves, I need five of the green leaves. We already have those. I will probably just set up down here on the beach. That's what I would do in real life is I would probably just set up almost like exactly right here so that I'm in the shade underneath this palm tree. Uh, I would check the tide first. I don't know, you know, I, I doubt this game has tidal mechanics. But that's where I personally would start, is with the, you know, where is the tide going to come in and where is it going to go out to. But if I had a beach like this that was safe from the water, this is exactly where I'd camp. Saves me the trouble of having to make a lean-to. Keeps me out of the sun. It'll be all right. It'd do for makeshift while I was getting other stuff together. The good news is we have palm leaves. Uh, if we have palm leaves, we're in good shape. You can craft just about anything out of a palm leaf. So you can lanyard them. You can do all kinds of stuff. All right, so that's done. Sleep for six hours or more. Do I have to? All right, I'm going to eat some food first. But then I am going to sleep for six hours. Oh, no, dude, I have a tummy ache? When did, I, when did I get a tummy ache? That probably should have been indicated at some point. Do I still have a tummy ache? I didn't see anything pop up that was like, yo, you got diarrhea. Wah, 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 wah. All right, wants me to build a signal fire. What's a signal fire going to look like? Uh, we've got a campfire and we've got a smoke signal. I'm guessing it's talking about the smoke signal. So we will make one of these and we kind of want it to be away from anything flammable. If you're making a smoke signal, usually you want, like, wet leaves and stuff in order to make that happen. But there we go. Put that thing up in the air. Oh, it's... Oh. Okay. Fair enough. Apparently, I have invented the power of the sky laser. Sky laser! Hopefully, all of my fellow Spaniards can find me now. If I smack that on the ground, will it craft it? Looks like the answer to the question is no. Um, I was trying to bust it open, but it don't want to bust. I will take it with me, though, for, like, later on food. What does it want me to do? It wants me to find the pictured grotto. Do I have, like, a map or anything? Start the mapping process to find resources. Hey, okay, all right. So, basically, I just put this here. So, this is basically a gamification, an abstraction. It's going to help me find my way home, is what the game is telling me here. Let's go ahead and get some of the basic camp stuff done. I'd like to make a campfire. If I can find stones, I can make a stone campfire, though, which actually has a little bit more permanence to it. Yeah, let's go wander for a minute. Let's go see what we can find around. It is a little bit dark out here, and I'm a little bit worried I'm going to step on a snake. 
but I don't know, depending on where we've landed, I don't know if that's a, a rational thing to be worried about. I don't know, is that a thing that most normal people worry about? Like, I live in rattlesnake hell. Like, there's rattlesnakes everywhere where I live, so, like, a frequent portion of my concern when I'm anywhere out in the middle of nowhere is, like, am I gonna step on a snake? Because, like, I'd rather not. My neighbor got bit by one and almost died, dude. Like, she got bit and it was, ooh, a pile of stones? Nice. Yeah, I'll take four rocks, sure. There we go. Can I do it again? Or does it, like, tap out? I guess we're good. Oh, dude, I thought those were wolves for a second. Very, very chicken-like wolves. A massive stone? What do I do with a massive stone? I can make a stone saw? A stone tool for processing wood. Okay, so I can plank with it, basically. Gotcha. We can also make a stone axe. That might not be a bad idea, though. I've got a pretty considerable chance of injuring myself in the attempt. Oh, it's because I'm doing it in the dark. That's a nice little detail. Oh, you need three massive stones in order to make the campfire. The downside is the massive stone weighs like a gajillion pounds, dude. A gajillion trillion pounds. That's what it weighs. Since I'm actually carrying around way too much crap right now, and I also want to keep playing around with the building system, uh, I'm going to build this chest right here. Let's make a storage medium. What's that going to cost me? Four sticks. Done like dinner. Let's do it. Okay, so we'll put our little storage chest right there. We'll put the four sticks in. 21% chance of hideously maiming myself. Maybe I'll just sleep to the manana. Maybe that's what I'll do. I still have a stomach ache too. Lame. All right, well, at least it's daytime now, so I can build without maiming myself. Uh, there's our storage chest. Looks good. How much does the storage container hold? Because I'm really just going to fill it with large bulbous rocks. That's the entire plan right now. Bulbous rocks. That's it. Uh, if we can find some other kind of food, I would also be okay with that situation. Apparently, I've got a stomach ache and it's not going away. I have a 35% chance of carrying it whenever I sleep. However, I'm aware of the fact because I stumbled into this when I was testing the game out. There's chamomile flowers over here. And if you know one thing about chamomile tea... It's that chamomile helps out with some stomach distress, and so these white flowers over here should help out with that, and they're also right near this crazy-looking mountain. I'm really, really worried that that big chunk down there is going to fall on me. Then again, maybe being crushed by the giant hat of the mountain would be preferable to... What is that? Is that a skunk? What is that? I don't know what that is. What are you? A squirrel? Oh, Christ! Ah! Oh my god, it's like a weasel, bro. A short-eared dog? What the hell? Oh my god, that was so much more visceral and violent than I expected it to be. Oh my god. What the hell is a short-eared dog? I thought it was a squirrel, man. I didn't know it was going to be hostile. Thing came at me like a chihuahua, bro. There ain't nothing more terrifying than a chihuahua. All right. Nothing has more hate in its heart than a chihuahua, dude. All right. Uh, let's see here. I do want some chamomile. I would suggest that we take that. And now that I've unlocked that, what does it take to get the chamomile stuff? Is it in, like, the meds menu? So we've got a ship repair kit. I, I guess I'm probably going to have a ship at some point. A steamed leaf bandage. Chamomile juice. We haven't found the other thing that goes into it. It looks like we've got to find some kind of, like, fern leaf or something. Uh, you can't go out in the ocean, by the way. I forgot to mention that. You can go swimming out in the ocean. Like, there's stuff down there. There's, like, resources and things around if you're interested in the ocean. Uh, the good news is my tummy tum ache went away, so I'm no longer inflicted with a bad case of the old drippy growlies. So we're feeling pretty good. I was mauled by a large weasel, the likes of which I've never seen before. But I got him about as badly as he got me. So, fair enough. I feel like we can just call it a truce. I'm definitely going to eat him, though. 
Like, I feel like if we kill it, we gotta eat it. Now, I've been walking up and down, just kind of like the edge of the island. And specifically, I'm looking for banana trees. And I'm looking for rocks and stones. Uh, it looks like we may have something going on over here. Yeah. Is that a stone right there? Oh, that's a skeleton. Oh, it's a, it's a coconut. Okay. Yeah, we're a little bit thirsty. We could get in on some coconut. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. I gotta take a second and break it all open, but I think we'll be alright. Uh, yeah, there's a whale corpse over here, and hello, what are you? An Indian hunting drawing. An ancient tablet with drawing the hunting process is depicted here. They crouch and sneak up on animals, and it seems the animals do not hear them. They approach from behind, they hide behind trees and stones, or come from the top of the hills, and the animals do not see them. Okay. This is actually a treasure trove right here. Like, you can do a lot with scrimshaw. Like, whalebone is really, really useful as a crafting material. The fact that we're not utilizing it makes my it makes my feet itch. Oh, I found a cave. Is this the grotto? I mean, it looks like a grotto to me. Although, don't grottos normally have, like, a lagoon in them? Puffball mushrooms. I don't know if those are edible. Nonetheless. Oh, you gotta dry them out. Okay. Let's go ahead and process our coconuts for the moment. Because I'd really like to have all this stuff ready to go before I sleep. So we'll knock those out real quick, and we are going to eat that, and we are going to eat that one. We'll get some coconut in us. And we didn't pick up indigestion, so that's always awesome. Oh, we found the... Those are scorpions, dude. Those aren't like little scorpions like where I live. Those are big scorpions. There's a rope. Okay. A bunch of sticks. And a campfire with stones. I mean, I guess I could just live in here. I don't see why not. I mean, what if I just live in the grotto? Like, it doesn't feel like the worst idea to me. Jatoba gum? What is Jatoba gum? Tinder for fire ignition. You get it from a Jatoba tree. Oh, okay. Or a Hutoba tree. I don't know. I don't know if the J makes a just sound or if it makes like a ha, ha, H sound. Ooh, banana leaves. There we go. All right, all right. Somebody gathered up some goodies out here. Oh, we found some living water, too. Okay. Yeah, I think this is our new... Oh, man, if you don't get out of here... Can I, can I, like, beat the scorpion with a stick? I really feel like I want to kill this scorpion. I don't feel comfortable sleeping near them. That having been said... Oh, with the banana leaves, you can I can make a leaf hat, a leaf cape, a leaf skirt, and leaf shoes. Right on, right on. Um, the first thing I would like to do is make a bed. There we go. Got the bed down. Throw that together. I actually kind of want to light this fire too. Oh, I don't have a way to start a fire. I gotta make a bow drill. That's right. So to start the fire, there it is. Make one of those. And let us see. If we can get this thing going. It looks like we have a 20% chance to ignite it. Even using the piece of y Yatoba gum. There we go. We got it. Oh, the scorpions don't like the light. That's a cool little detail. I did not expect that at all. The scorpions all bailed out of the cave because they don't like the light. Huh. Interesting. 
Okay, well now that we've got a little bit of illumination going on in here, I do need to like rebuild some stuff. There's another Yatoba gum. Some more sticks and things over here. Oh, we've also got like a little skylight that comes through in the evening. Nice. In general, I personally, like as a guy with a geology degree, I would be careful about lighting fires in caves. That's just me personally. Stone has this fun habit of expanding and contracting based on temperature, and that can cause unpredictable things to happen with the roof of the cave. But since this is a video game, I'm going to assume that we don't have to account for, like, wild variables like that. Uh, let's see what else is around here. That's not a lootable stick. It kind of looked like one for a second. It's kind of weird. Like, it is so hard to find rocks in this game. That's the toughest part. Like, there's stones laying around everywhere, but they've got to be, like, special, you know, pre-approved stones. Uh, to count. Oh, there's another entrance to the cave right here, too. So it actually comes out inland. Okay. Uh, so we're probably going to want to break that signal over there, and we'll want to rebuild it over here. So it's right outside the mouth of the cave. And we'll put one on either side, too, so that we can find our way when we need to. It looks like we've got some fairly nasty weather coming in, too. So that's something else we'll have to account for. I don't know what happens when you're outside in the rain in this game. But one can only assume that it's probably not good. Like, I went for a swim when I was testing the game out, and it gave me, like, a soaked status effect that I think, like, fiddled with... Oh, where'd my cave mouth go? There it is. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna go back and, like, sleep, because, like, we're okay on, like, food and water right now. I'm not really that worried about it. I wanted to actually... Let me go get my stones out of the chest, because I want to cut up that long-eared dog, and I want to eat some... Uh, it looks like you can fall a decent amount without taking too much damage, so that's nice. Okay, so with my inventory chest, I just want to bring back my rocks and my sticks and my goodies. That's about it. Oh, I'm overweight right now. Bummer. Um, I don't really need the big rock, I guess. I can leave the big rock here. And then... Mm, I don't like the idea of sleeping in this weather. I think our best bet is to go back to the grotto and crash out there. That just kind of feels safer to me. I do like that they've struck a balance between, like, some survival games. It's so dark at night, dude. Like, it's so ridiculously dark. Like, you can't do anything. I'm not a big fan of that design philosophy when it comes to survival games. Like, I like that we can still look around and we can see stuff. And I like that there's kind of an elegance to the fact that they just give you a chance to fail at crafting while you're in the dark. Like, that's actually, like, a really, really good, I think, compromise where, like, you it's still light enough outside to, like, see and, like, figure out what's going on. But, like, if you try to build anything or you try to craft anything in the dark, it has a pretty good chance of going sideways and you busting yourself up. Aw, dude, look at the little skeleton. Or, I'm sorry, look at the little scorpions, dude. They're upset. I kicked them out of their cave. I'm the worst landlord ever. I'm a terrible person who does terrible things to scorpion kind, and I should be punished. All right, so as far as this fire is concerned, uh, I can upgrade the fire, actually. If we find a pot, we have to find a pot, and then we can upgrade it to a cooking fire. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit more fuel to the fire. I'm a big fan in real life of survival strategies that involve perpetual fires. Like, basically a fire that you always keep burning. Uh, it takes a lot of energy to do. But our captain Juan Ponce de Leon also survived the shipwreck. Sea currents brought him to this same island just a bit earlier before my awakening. He located the grotto and made it his temporary shelter. Then he started to act quickly and decisively. After building up the temporary camp, the captain began to explore the island. He named it the Island of Hope. During his trip to the small nearby island, he heard distant cannon shots. It was a signal from one of our ships. The 
captain left a note, then hurriedly packed and sailed towards the sound of the gunshots. He was in a hurry to help his team. In this hurry, he forgot his spyglass on the small island. It can be quite useful to me. Okay. To anyone reading this, I am Juan Ponce de Leon. Ahead of the expedition studying the islands, I barely survived the shipwreck and arrived here on a lifeboat. I'm leaving this note in case somebody also survived. I spent a few days investigating the island. I'm leaving a rough map and my notes about the island here in this grotto. The island's uninhabited, but it is full of wild birds and animals, so be careful. There are ruins and traces of ancient Indian civilization. This morning, I was exploring a small island in the bay to the east and heard cannon fire. Okay, you forgot his spy blast in the place where I heard the cannon fire. You can look for it. It is in a conspicuous place with many fireflies. Okay. And then I recommend you take a good look around in the clear weather before you go after me. The old Indian observatory at the top of the mountain would be the perfect place to do this. It is easy to find. The white symbol above it is visible from almost everywhere. I'm leaving this bottle of living water so the person that finds it can restore the health that their ship wrecks. Cool, man. Thanks for the, uh, thanks for the, thanks for the bottle. Appreciate it. Uh, that's about all the time I have for today, but honestly? Like, not a bad effort. Like, I I'm used to, so, like, the graphics and whatnot are a little bit low budget, but they put just enough polish in there to, like, where you can tell that the graphical stylings were more a function of utility rather than just, like, skipping over it. Because, like, with the lighting effects and whatnot, and the various, like, if I go in the ocean and come back, my character's wet. Like, his arms will be all wet and stuff when I'm jumping around. And so, anyways, they've struck a nice balance between, like, detail and also kind of saving time on creating, like, textures and whatnot for certain things. Like, I don't know. I think we're too early to tell with this one, but it's just a demo, and you can go play the demo, and you can play it for a lot longer than I get to here on the channel, and you can let me know what you think. That's totally an option. This demo is publicly available. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Survival Fountain of Youth. The only thing about the game that I don't particularly like is I don't like the crafting system. Like, I'm fine with the crafting system when it's, like, bandages and stuff. But for things like breaking open coconuts or breaking open, like, conch shells, like, I wish we could kind of throw them on the ground and, like, smack them with something. That always feels a little bit more immersive to me. I want to see how, like, the fishing mechanics and things like that work, too. Like, from the stuff we have in here, there's, like, food drying, there's a cart, there's a carpentry workbench, there's a rain collector, there's, you know, there's all kinds of things in here that we haven't got to play around with yet. And I want to. I desperately want to play around with them. Oh, it's a rainy day. Let's go see what the, the rain effects look like. Hold on. So let's see what happens in the rain out here. Oh, it gets all kinds of misty from, like, the impact of the rain. Oh, and I do like how the leaves get blown a little bit aggressively, like, in a direction. That doesn't look too bad. And it looks like we've got a little meter filling up right now, too, for, like, how wet we are. Interesting. All right, well, anyways, that's all the time I got for today, but I do want to play more. Man. I'll see you all tomorrow uh, with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. I appreciate you swinging on through, and thank you for the luxury of your time. I'll be back later. Bye, everybody.